Did you know that more people now get their news online than from any other source? MainWebNews.com covers the current events forming the trends of tomorrow. Experience the future of Maine News today at MainWebNews.com. Twenty or so members of the local steering committee for something called Maine's Gateway One Quarter Action Plan recently gathered in Rockland. They were there to discuss land use issues surrounding Route 1. However, I think it's fair to say that they were quite surprised when a group of activists showed up to their meeting and voiced some harsh criticism of their project. Uh, I'm here because I'm just learning about the Gateway One project and I'm not very happy. Uh, for my own curiosity, I wonder if you'd be willing to do me. How many of you on the panel here are familiar with Agenda 21? None of the 20 or so Gateway 1 Steering Committee members had even heard of UN Agenda 21. So first we'll have to take a look at what the United Nations admittedly sinister sounding Agenda 21 protocols are all about. And then we'll see what connections, if any, there are between the United Nations Agenda 21 and Maine's Gateway 1 Quarter Action Plan. And now, Maine Web News. Now this story gives us a good opportunity to take a look at an even bigger story, which is that there are two divergent views on history and how events in the world generally happen. For example, if you subscribe to what I call the accidental view of history, you believe that people are generally good and well-meaning, but try as we might, we just kind of keep stumbling and bumbling our way into wars and economic crisis. Others view history and world events as being long planned with connected insiders pulling the real levels of power from somewhere outside of the public spotlight and outside of public accountability. If you tend to believe that things happen by accident, you'll probably come away from this story feeling like the main Gateway One Corridor action plan was a, an organic response to a local problem. However, if you take the view that there are more powerful, perhaps more sinister forces behind the events that shape our world, then you might come away from this a different point of view. First, let's start with the United Nations itself. It's an organization of unelected bureaucrats, for lack of a better word. It was established largely by the international banking families. The Rothschilds and Rockefellers have always played key roles. The United Nations building in New York sits on land donated by the Rockefeller family. It's about international uh, bodies dictating how we're going to use land here in America. In the Declaration of Independence, it said that we are uh, to have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Before they used the word happiness, it was um, over the word property. Knowing that if a person owns private property, they can derive their own happiness and wealth. Thankfully, the Maine State Constitution is a little more specific. It says, All people are born equally free and independent and have certain natural, inherent, and unalienable rights, among which are those of in enjoying and defending life, liberty, acquiring, and here's the specific part, possessing and protecting property. If we let this corridor project go through, we're going to be dictated to from foreign bodies how to use land in America. And I believe it will be a slippery slope before we open the door um, to foreign courts, how we're going to implement our, our judicial system, and, and, and a host of other things. And the collective needs of non-human species must <coughs> take precedence over the needs and desires of humans. They, they want to do away with this. They want to make everything wild and control all private property. Agenda 21 is the 1992 United Nations Declaration on the Environment based on a summit in Rio de Janeiro. Agenda 21 identifies itself as the comprehensive environmental plan of action to be taken globally, nationally, and locally by organizations of the United Nations system. Sustainable development is the phrase commonly used for Agenda 21 at the local level. Skeptics see Agenda 21 as an action plan to implement a 21st century move towards a global government, a new world order if you will, 
where unelected elitists, mostly from the old money families of Europe, will rule the world. This new world order would mean the end of our inalienable rights here in America, and in fact, it would be the end of our national sovereignty. You don't believe that that's the agenda? Well, don't take my word for it. David Rockefeller said in his memoirs, the supranational sovereignty of an intellectual elite and world bankers is surely preferable to the national auto-determination practiced in past centuries. According to these folks, we should just let them rule the world. Their vision of a new world order calls for the deindustrialization of the Western world. Again, don't take my word for it. The man behind the UN Agenda 21, Maurice Strong, said at the 1992 conference, Corey Strong pushed hard for NAFTA, CAFTA, and other trade agreements that would ultimately lead to the deindustrialization of America. If you take the accidental view of history, you probably find it hard to believe that things like our collapse of American industry could have been planned, could have been designed that way. You might believe that NAFTA and CAFTA, which we were told was going to lead to high-tech jobs replacing our industry, would lead to what we have in the United States right now, which is the loss of our old industry replaced by nothing. So this all leads to the big question. What apparent connections, if any, are there between the United Nations Agenda 21 and Maine's Gateway One Quarter Action Plan? And beneath a facade of your laudable objectives and supposed, supposedly sustainable development, good sounding titles, you are you in the process of implementing rather radical, unpopular, socialist, central planning directives intended to shift the population from rural areas into high density areas. Where Agenda 21 aims to pack and stack human beings into small settlement zones, Maine's Gateway One Quarter Action Plan calls for moving people into what documents describe as designated community centers. Maine Gateway One Action Plan goes on to state that by 2030, 85% of all households in Maine's Gateway One community will live within medium to high access to retail facilities. Aggressively guide job growth into compact core growth areas, requiring a balance between jobs and housing in each core growth area with housing prices that match up with the area's wages. High percentages of new jobs and housings within the labor market surrounding Gateway One communities being channeled into core growth areas. Distribution of new residential development will be strongly directed by a variety of incentives, housing policies, growth management regulations. Nine out of ten new homes projected for the Great Way, Great Way One corridor of these municipalities would have to locate within the designated areas. Maine's Gateway One Corridor Action Plan outlines significant limits on the development of rural areas. This is a map of the Wildlands Project. The red represents areas that are to be off limits to human beings. If you live there now, you won't. Human activity will also be very limited in the yellow areas, so if you live there, pretty good chance you'll have to move. The black areas are the so-called smart growth zones where humans are to be packed like something out of an old film Metropolis. Rent the film Metropolis to get an idea of what these folks might have in mind. The United Nations has declared that 2005 to 2015 is the decade of education for sustainable development to teach children all over the world to lose their sense of national ties and go along with the Global Agenda 21 program. Children learn to be loyal to a globalist system over their own country and to be loyal to the government over their own parents. Maybe this is why Maurice Strong has advocated for requiring a license to have children. Evan Richard is the land use planning consultant hired to help implement the Gateway One Corridor Action Plan. He told Maine Web News he has never heard of Agenda 21 and suggests that the Gateway One Corridor is an organic reaction to a local problem. I don't pretend to understand a lot of what I just heard, but I worked on Gateway for quite a few years, and I can attest to the fact 
that no one from the UN ever contacted me and, and had anything to do with this. And I just don't understand talking about this being international. I can't think of anything more local than a group of towns getting together to make decisions about their own future and what, what kind of quality of life they will have. How this has international application, you know, I, I don't understand that. The chairman of the steering committee handed me a booklet containing the Gateway One Corridor Action Plan. The first bold headline on page one says, A New World of Transportation. In fact, the word world appears over and over and over again. For something that is proposed as an organic reaction to a local problem, there is a lot of focus on world implications. No wonder the objectors feel uneasy about this. It sounds to me more like a crisis creation and problem reaction solution model is at work. The government creates a problem predicting the public's reaction and offering a solution, which was of course the government's real agenda all along. All of our presidents have submitted to the UN Agenda 21 protocols. President Bush in 1992 attended the Rio de Janeiro Agenda 21 summit and pledged the United States support. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. Bill Clinton bypassed Congress and advanced Agenda 21 through executive order, establishing the President's Council on Sustainable Development. George W. Bush took this a giant step forward when he quietly signed the United States onto the Partnership for Prosperity and Security, effectively ending American sovereignty. The Bush administration's open borders policy and its uh, decision to ignore the enforcement of this country's immigration laws is part of a broader agenda. President Bush signed a formal agreement that will end the United States as we know it, and he took the step without approval from either the U.S. Congress or the people of the United States. Barack Obama quickly rose from obscurity to celebrity when David Rockefeller chose to promote him as our next president. The Rothschild Rockefeller dominated press immediately began swooning over this former community organizer. As president, Obama has obeyed Rockefeller's beloved Agenda 21 protocols and pushed for carbon taxes designed to be the funding source of a global government. Incidentally, Peggy Rockefeller founded the Maine Coastal Heritage Trust, whose website is linked to the World Conservation Unit. Maine Coastal Heritage Trust now owns 30 of Maine's most beautiful islands. That's another story. So what do you think? Does history tend to occur organically? Or are the events that shape our world planned far in advance and carefully controlled? As for me, the stumbling, bumbling, accidental view of history, I'm not buying it. And I'm personally glad that we have watchdogs in the state of Maine keeping an eye out for Agenda 21 and other globalist protocols and trying to prevent them from being implemented in our beautiful state. This is Jared LeBlanc, going in-depth on the issues with Maine Web News.